so uh, hello everybody welcome to this uh, inaugural course uh, on flutter flow and firebase master class my name is uh, kaushik vaidyanathan i am uh, i am from india but settled in taiwan uh, many people in the flutter flow community know me as the hobby uh, from the hobby.com so i am a flutter flow squad member uh, moderator of the discord uh, community server of uh, the official flutter flow discord community server and based on last year's usage of flutter flow i was uh, one of the top 0.1% power users of flutter flow right uh, that's a bit about me uh, let's get going so interacting with quite a lot of people on a daily basis uh, in the community uh i hear a lot of questions many people talk to me discuss with me uh with regards to their problems using flutter flow and how they can get better etc uh so i have here summarized the top 3 questions that i have heard again and again that people ask is number 1 can scalable apps be designed using flutter flow now this is a very obvious question and this is not just to me this has been publicly spoken this uh, there are quite a lot of discussions that are going about it recently Uh, I think Andrew uh, from and Will Hobek from uh, the Flutter Flow official team, they as well released uh, a video uh, which is available on Flutter Flow's Twitter handle about uh, can scalable apps be designed using Flutter Flow. Uh, so I would like to add upon my views and my perspectives on what it takes to build scalable applications. A simple answer is yes, but we are going to talk about how, right? What it takes to actually build scalable apps. The second question is. often times people fall uh, or have limitations when using firebase as their database of choice where they see query restrictions like in queries right now this is not something that is widely addressed from the perspective that people design uh, databases in one way and they uh, reach to certain limitation and i'll give you some uh, practical examples of why you should be very cautious and concerned about this in query and what it could cost to you right and how you validate your app so that it's designed uh, in a better structure and how you can actually overcome this sorry yeah and third one uh, is uh, about a monthly firebase billing a lot of people uh, don't get their apps optimized uh, they dream to scale uh, they design it way too quickly with tools like flutter flow but uh, they do not really pay great attention to where it could hurt them the most which is their packet right uh, so uh, their monthly firebase billing is very high what should we do to lower or optimize it and many people even ask me questions like should we migrate to superbase should we migrate to uh, any other api based server uh, my simple answer would be no uh, if you are with firebase it's very much possible uh, to build scalable applications at cost optimized uh, even when you are using firebase right and this this course is all about flutter flow and firebase so we are going to play uh great attention and detail with regards to how you can get the best out of your firebase and flutter flow setup so according to me um a good system it always starts with a good database design right there is no uh, compromise to a good database design and why is because 90% of your monthly uh, infrastructure it billing uh, or or software cost actually comes from your backend not the ui flutter flow being a ui uh, design uh, tool uh, of course with great backend connectivity which makes things very very easy it's an app design uh, framework but since you use firebase as a backend uh, you notice that Fl flutter flow is a fixed subscription uh, monthly subscription it varies in price depending on the region that you are in but firebase is variable billing right so it's a on use case so when you migrate your plan from a spark plan to blaze plan on firebase it's pay as you uh, go so whatever you use you're going to pay money for it so you have to configure your credit card and then uh, yeah on monthly basis it deducts now if you actually notice at times it can be quite notoriously very very high when your apps uh, have significant amount of usage and you really don't know how to cut down it's going to burn down your pockets and this is a very discussed Uh, topic in uh, uh, amongst lot of users using flutter flow and even people uh, beyond using other systems like flutter react etc who are using firebase as their backend architecture right so we we are going to see how to optimize that third is with good database design you will achieve a lot more with no code low code tools uh, that includes flutter flow by by this statement what i actually mean 
is uh, you can achieve quite a lot of business logic without having to uh, fiddle around uh, much with custom code uh, custom functions or custom widgets or custom actions uh, that we know in flutterflow right many people find it complicated to write this custom code but, uh, and chat gpt can help you there but having said that uh, there is no replacement to a good database design and we will cover more of this later on uh, uh, before the end of this very first chapter you will have a brief understanding of why you need to pay further more attention into what we are going to talk about next right so so the main concern or uh, what it takes to first build a scalable app not, it, not just mobile app even a web app uh, the first and foremost thing that you need to really understand is data flow or mastering this data flow taking control over this data flow right this is what helps you convert great ui to functional and scalable apps by apps i mean mobile apps again web apps anything be it any app which is connected to a database so to get and master your data flow right the first and foremost element is know your app users by users i mean any and everybody who is going to interact with your app it can be let's say for example with a marketplace e-commerce application like amazon you have the end consumers like us who are buying on the platform you have the service providers or the vendors who are selling on the platform and then third you have the system administrators the support team the sales team who are actively sitting on the platform interacting uh, with the platform with the software with the app uh, to, to achieve various tasks or fulfill their interest and responsibilities with that said each one of them perceives your application in a very different way we will come to more of this a bit later the second aspect of mastering data flow is understanding the business logic now uh, of course uh, i mean pardon me on the spelling mistake there uh, i'll correct it but the second thing that you need to really pay great attention is on business logic one key phrase that i have constantly iterated uh, over and over again told repeatedly this to people that every single time you are going to create or update any document or any record that's when you have maximum access to contextual data about that particular event or uh, by event i mean creating a document or updating a document so you will have maximum context with regards to that particular event only during this only when you perform this operation a simple example would be that let's say you want to uh, you, you are building an app like facebook where people are posting uh, or uh, commenting now you want to basically let's say later on understand hey how frequently does this user post and for which you will need to start recording every single time the poster uh, the user is creating a post along with the post content you also need to start recording the time uh, during which they post so that they, you can later on run through some formulas errands and you can come up with uh, you know uh, uh, various analytics and metrics to really understand the user behavior but if you did not actually record this time right during the create or up, uh, update operation you have lost that data forever later on you will not be uh, able to actually tap into this data so even if you want uh, to extract this data uh, it is not possible and in some other cases might not be to do with time but in some other cases when you try to make available this data from somewhere else you will make it a very expensive operation consuming a lot of reach which could be unwanted which could be seriously avoidable if you start thinking through and mastering data flow and that is why scalable applications are always designed with extreme data flow consideration and understanding the third thing that we are going to focus on in this module is use the infrastructure wisely now what i mean is the source of error should always just be one so whenever there is a bug you immediately know where the bug is number two is you always create redundancies Red redundancies are not bad they are actually very very good we are going to see why and then you are going to convert the data format uh, in multiple ways to overcome query limitations and we will see uh, more of this uh, all about this a bit later as we progress along the course 
So for this whole master class, we are going to be using a demo app, uh, which we will be optimizing, which we will be making it production grade as we move along the course, one module by one module. So we'll be using the Sniff Social uh, from the Flutterflow template app repository. So anybody who has access to Flutterflow, if you create your account, follow the basic tutorials, you can set it up, you can connect it to Firebase or uh, yeah, in the very next video, we will actually help you uh, connect this to Firebase. And this is the basic app that is uh, we are going to use. I think this is available even for uh, free apps. Uh, I mean, free Flutterflow users uh, who do not have paid memberships or subscriptions. But I would highly advise that you actually avail these subscriptions. At the same time, you also put your uh, Firebase to the Blaze plan. It doesn't cost much money. Uh, and trust me, you're going to gain a lot out of it, a lot. So uh, a bit more why uh, these app users matter. Uh, I should have actually placed this slide a bit earlier, but it's fine. So a bit more about why these app users actually matter, because uh, as we divided, uh, there are end users, there are admin interface, and then there are like, let's say the businesses uh, as per uh, the Sniff Social app. So uh, the, the data always originates amongst amidst uh, these users when they perform action, when they fill a form, when they take some actions or press a like button or follow button. So the data originates here and it's also consumed among them, right? So you always create a, a derivative of your data. You always transform it into meaningful form factor for to excite another set of users towards your app. That's how you start building a scale into your whole operations as an organization. So a simple data connectivity, for example, uh, in uh, in terms of Sniff Social would be where somebody creates posts, likes, comments, like end users, that gets translated into, let's say, profanity-based filters or bad report, uh, handling bad reports or handling complaints uh, or handling spams, uh, then recording categorizing uh, these posts or comments into various categories or extracting content or entities uh, or meaningful information that AI machine learning does beautifully right uh, from all this content or interpreting the data in a completely different form factor like how we spoke about with regards to time recording timestamps the all these actions are performed on an admin level now a lot of people think about making money from ads how do you actually make money from ads when you convert all these meaningful information that you extract that you interpreted into a form factor that any business or any individual might appreciate paying money for so you need to really uh, transform that data into a form factor that is going to add value to my business. So, and when you do that, you close the loop and business in terms start then advertising to the end user. So it's a cycle and this is the simple data connectivity that we will try to master over the course of next few weeks as we uh, go through with the Sniff social application. Uh, and if you just post, as we discussed uh, and uh, iterated just before concluding, if you just post a uh, the post content, an analytics team is looking for the location, the frequency of app use and so on of the user and uh, so that they can monetize and leverage from the businesses. By the time it actually reaches the business, all the data is missing uh, and, or it gets very, very expensive to gather. So we will dive deep into every bit of uh, whatever I am talking about in this first introductory video that is going to help you build affordable apps, scalable applications, easy to maintain, and unlike over 95% of apps that fail in the market due to it being very, very expensive. So we will learn how to store the information, how to extract, how to transform this information in a meaningful manner and leverage a platform like Flutterflow to create sophisticated, scalable applications in general. Thanks for watching. And in case you have any app requirements, with regards to Flutterflow, you have any queries, that is my email right there that you see on, on the screen, flutterflowsquad at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much. Stay tuned for the next video.